That was made by Jordan Gibson, the artist for this issue. They are such a BTAS geek. I love it. Welcome back, fellow Batman the Animated Series geeks, to this show where I stand in front of a green screen and tell you all about Batman the Adventures Continue, or Justice League Infinity, but those are different videos. Those are, there's similar videos to this, but diff they're different videos. You should watch those videos too. At the end of this video, I'll be revealing who down under in the Australia box won our latest two giveaways, a Zoom call with the three of us, and a bunch of Green Lantern and Green Arrow comics. But today is mainly about covering the newest BTAC issue, number four of season two. Not to be confused with the number four of last season, which was the one that ended with Firefly being all, I can breathe fire now! Or, I guess that was chapter four. Number four was technically the Azrael one where we met my boy, Mr. Wing. God, I'm glad we're not doing weird chapter numbers this year. This issue titled The Muscle sees Batman and Detective Renee Montoya take on a new masked gun for hire. <clears throat> the muscle in what is probably the most gorgeous looking DCAU comic we've seen in a while. And I'm not kidding. Please give Jordan more stuff to do, DC. Or anybody. Jordan, come draw for our webcomic, Legacies of the DCAU. I don't even care. Let's go! Correction speed run! Stuff we messed up last time. Trick Pony Studios suggests that Batgirl's random normal ass motorcycle <laughs> ass motorcycle is perhaps the same as Black Canaries that we saw in Justice League Unlimited. But upon inspection, it's similar, but... <sighs> Not, Not quite, quite the same. My new running theory is that since Barbara wanted to go after Jazzman herself, rather than take a bat cycle from the bat cave, she just used her own personal motorcycle. Though that would mean Batgirl's driving around with Barbara Gordon's license plates and, and why, why would she need a sidecar? For lugging around all that baggage? Oh! And a few people pointed out to us that Batman actually used exploding batarangs as early as the JL premiere, Secret Origins, which I should have remembered because I showed a clip from that episode referencing exploding batarangs last year, and Batman even used them way back in Legends of the Dark Knight, an episode of the new Batman adventures. But like, the point of that bit was that he it doesn't matter how long ago he first used them, they should not be a new thing at this point on the timeline regardless. Hell, let's just say this is Black Canary's motorcycle because in this continuity, Batgirl is now in the Justice League, Penguin is married to Calendar Girl, and Terry McGinnis will never be born. You can't prove otherwise, don't even try. DCAU references. As far as the plot of this issue goes, similar to how last issue was kind of retreading Robin's Reckoning, this one was pretty Bane-like. Like the episode Bane, not the character, even though that episode was about that. What I'm, it's Rupert Thorne hires a big muscly guy to take care of his uh, opposition, okay? Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. One of the thugs in the opening fight sequence was confirmed on Twitter by Jordan Gibson to be none other than super famous and memorable BTAS goon Mason from the super famous and memorable episode, It's Never Too Late. If you want to hear me and my friend Brian trash all over that episode, listen to our new podcast, Jump on the Bat Wagon over on the Pod Tower channel or Spotify or iTunes or whatever. I know some of you really like that episode, but uh... Anyway, interestingly, here Mason works for Rupert Thorne, while in the episode he worked against Thorne for Arnold Stromwell. But if Arnie got out of the crime biz following It's Never Too Late, Mason still has to pay the bad guy bills, right? This other guy might be subconsciously based on Guru, a character who appeared in the TNBA episode Never Fear, though not confirmed to be literally him. In fact, while I was looking on the DCAU wiki for who this other guy might be, I accidentally stumbled upon this character named Beecham, apparently, who, well, he looks exactly like the character model for Mason. I'm sure you can see that, right? You can see that? It's not just me. Did they reuse this guy and end up canonically naming him twice? Or is his full name Mason Beecham? I'm gonna go with that one for the Watchtower Database Encyclopedia website that will exist at some point before you die, probably. And lastly, for gangster-based denominations, we have this guy who kinda looks like Ferris Boyle, the guy who inadvertently created Mr. Freeze. But it's likely not him. I mean, maybe. He probably has to pay bad guy bills too after being frozen into a Mark Hamill popsicle. And speaking of Mr. Freeze, the muscle's giant armored car bears a pretty strong resemblance to Freeze's signature big gray van seen in the Sub-Zero movie and TNBA's Cold Comfort. I really enjoy how Bruce Wayne's hair always be like, oh, I'm disheveled? Two floopies at your service. Alfred driving the Batmobile was a really fun sequence and reminded me a lot of when he had to pilot the Batwing in The Forgotten. Also, I love this little Batmobile key fob. It's so 
perfect. It's like a little miniature Batmobile grill. Wait a second, key fobs in the DCAU? What's next? Smartphones? Drones? This panel of Batman throwing a battering is pretty similar to this shot from the BTAS intro. And at the end of the issue here, we get a nice little cameo from Summer Gleason. Not the I'm sort of Summer Gleason, but not really look-alike that we just got in Justice League Infinity. The actual Summer Gleason, the real one. The same one that's standing near Aquaman's ambulance and the enemy below, you can't tell me that's not her. Continuing the BTAC tradition, because they've done it more than once, we get another brand new character in Gloria Navarro, Renee Montoya's, yes, that's right, girlfriend. Why do I say it that way, you ask? Well, you see, despite some weird schedule shifting that caused her to appear in a comic book before the cartoon, Renee Montoya was created by the Batman the Animated Series crew for that show back in 1992. Her mainstream comics counterpart was outed by Two-Face as a lesbian in the Gotham Central title from 2003. But this was years after both Batman cartoons had been off the air, so her sexuality had never been explored or even brought up passively on screen. Because of this, it's never been 100% clear which way Montoya swung in the DCAU. Is she canonically gay like her comics counterpart? Or is she straight? Or something else entirely? Well, Ty Templeton, former artist for The Adventures Continue and a thousand other DCAU things, confirmed on Twitter a few weeks back while new previews of this issue were coming out pun intended, that DCAU Montoya is a lesbian as well. I don't know why this really needs explaining, but this new BTAC issue solidifies it. She has a girlfriend, Gloria. They go to a police gala together. They make out at the end. I'm so sorry for anyone watching that shipped her and Bullock for some reason. I have no idea why you would do that. Bullock f sucks. Montoya is big gay, get over it. Why did I even have to talk about it for this long? Comic book references. Where the references come from the comic books. The muscle is first seen working for Emerson Mayfield, apparently a former Gotham City mayor, whose family, the Mayfields, were mentioned by Hamilton Hill in issue number two as being attached to the Court of Owls. This may be the underlying meaning behind when Mayfield says he doesn't need ancient history popping up to spoil his ambitions. Or maybe his family had a southern ice cream empire. Their meeting location on the pier is visually similar to the shadowy piers from Mad Love and Two of a Kind, both animated Batman comic books illustrated by Bruce Timm. Hamilton Hill Jr. briefly appeared with a speech at Renee Montoya's GCPD Recognition Service, which continues that thread of characters returning from the Court of Owls story arc. Rupert Thorne's video call with the muscle shows Thorne's office with a similar background to the one in Deathstroke and Lex Luthor's call in Season 1, Issue number 3. But you know, rich guys probably have similar windows, right? I wouldn't know anything about that. The muscle takedown is pretty embarrassing, but there are worse ways to get beaten. Dumbbell? Meet Fire Extinguisher. Officer Dunbar may be in reference to Max Dunbar, artist on the upcoming Batman Beyond Neo Year miniseries, which spun out of Batman Urban Legends number 7. He also provided the variant cover for Batman The Adventures Continue season 2 number 2. Dunbar Drive-In was also a thing in Batman 66 season 2 episode 11, The Clock King's Crazy Crimes. Even crime fighters must eat. And especially you, you're a growing boy and you need your nutrition. You're a growing boy who needs your <laughs> nutrition. The muscle tells Montoya to park at Haney and Apero Streets, which are both references to the classic Batman comics creators who together brought the character into the Brave and the Bold team-up tradition. Bob Haney also co-created characters like the Teen Titans and Metamorpho, while Jim Apero made a stamp on characters like Aquaman and the Spectre, among others of course, obviously. Duh. Paul Dini on the other hand is just out here creating new characters to attack Bruce Wayne in his car. Looking at you, Kitsune from Batman and Robin Adventures Annual number 2. Now here's Maddie with the timeline stuff, I think, unless the order of this thing has been swapped around, but that seems pretty unlikely because why would it? Though there aren't any rules to this thing, I guess, so. Timeline stuff! And I thought Justice League Infinity was what would lead to this section becoming automated. I suppose we could talk about the technology in this issue. I mean, Batman's got this pretty neat arm brace thing that we all felt was really interesting in that it harkens back to the one he has in the prologue to the comic adaptation of Batman Beyond's debut episode Rebirth. That was a long sentence to say, holy sh**. Perhaps it could be seen as a tweak on that same concept and universe. Maybe a precursor, or even an upgrade to that tech that's not quite as bulky, given that it's suggested to be the predecessor of the Beyond Batsuit in that comic. Or, since Dini and Burnett said that they're approaching this comic as if they never went on to do Beyond, it's all coincidence and this is just a similar style thingamabob on the other side of the DC animated
animated multiverse. Hmm. Ooh, what about the CD that we see for one panel? We've got smartphones galore all through this world and we're still using CDs? Come on, everybody knows that the DCAU switched to those GameCube style mini discs for all of your file storage needs. Nah, that's probably nothing. I got plenty of CDs. Physical media reigns supreme, you guys. How about Bullock being back on the force? This totally contradicts the already a totally different continuity Batman Adventures Volume 2 again! I suppose that's not actually the case, since he's back with GCPD by the time of Mystery of the Batwoman anyway, and wait a second! You're supposed to be our muscle, Mr. Duquesne. Okay, this is probably a stretch, but like, is Carlton Duquesne this new character, the muscle? We don't get an identity, so it feels like they're going to play into that being a bit of a mystery of the Batwoman. Chair! Of the chair. And they're both clearly black characters. I feel like it's possible, but the coloring has them in a different shades of skin tone, so I could also be wrong here, or it could be a case of different color palettes being used from comic to movie. Either way, Mystery of the Batwoman came out after Batman Beyond, so maybe that's not even canon. But wait! Penguin says Harridan! How dare you! Release me at once, you Harridan, or I'll- they used that word in issue number two. We're getting mystery of the Batwoman characters. I'm calling it. Get ready to dock points from the scoreboard on that one, Jimbo. Other slash miscellaneous. Muscle gonna shoot your car like get down, pack, cat, 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 you are done. Wait, I already did this joke. I need to see a four way cake fight pronto between Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, Elongated Man, and Harvey Bullock. Hey! He ate my donut! Did anyone else notice this weird speech bubble shifting thing in the digital versions? Like the whole layer was offset on the Alfred Batmobile page. Luckily it's not in the print version, that's just fine. But this was really weird, I just had to mention it. And I also have to mention, as someone who's Googled Art Deco shapes many, many, many times for BTAS related projects in the past, I immediately recognized a fellow Googler. You can't hide from me, Gibson! Last thing I've got is, what the hell is Muscle's costume supposed to be. Right here at the start, his head is all rounded and smooth, so I'm looking at the cover like, huh? He don't look like that? But then a couple pages later, yeah, he do look like that. He's got like a military looking helmet thing now, and the rest of his face is completely covered. But then next time we see him, dude's got no helmet and a Flash style open mouth mask cut out. And then he's back to how he was at the start, only to finish out the issue with his mouth revealed again. Does he wear a mask over his mask? Over his mask? Is this Winter Soldier logic? Can't wait for the McFarlane Toys muscle action figure, complete with six interchangeable mask pieces. Pieces. Scoreboard! <laughs> We're at negative one right now. We're guessing really, really badly on this comic. We don't really have any new revelations to change the score one way or the other, but we did get former Gotham Mayor Emerson Mayfield, who we predicted in the past might bring the Court of Owls back into this comic's focus, since Mayfield was one of the names in that old book Hamilton Hill leafed through, and might be connected to the mall of the same name that we saw in a couple BTAS episodes. So we're getting one step closer to one, if not two, points in our favor. Though since I risked the scoreboard all or nothing last video on a reappearance of Mr. Wing by the end of this thing, we'll just have to hold out hope. He better come back, Bird Boy keeps me young. CONCLUSION! Montoya being anti-Batman in this issue seems a little contradictory to her character in the animated series, particularly in episodes like POV, where she works directly with Batman and seems to sort of admire his style. But recent police form talk making the rounds these days may be to blame for this comic going out of its way to cover some of the more uncomfortable and or less accountable elements of the system. Which to be honest feels pretty at home with what we know of Montoya's backstory from the Gotham Girls comic. So some interesting social commentary directions to go with this politics aside. That kind of modernization of DCAU stories I can get behind. But holy crap, I cannot say enough good things about the art in this story. Like I mentioned earlier, Jordan had been sharing some sneak peeks on their social media leading up to this release, and boy was the hype real. Jordan seems to us to be like the ideal person to have on a series like this. Their tweets express pure childlike joy at getting the chance to draw DCAU Batman for a job. Congratulations, Jordan. I'm super jealous. We really hope this door is wide open for you now. Next issue, we're back to Batman Adventures alum Rick Burchett in what looks to be partially a flashback to the BTAS era, complete with Batman's costume from those days, which is always a lot of fun. Let's just not set it after Firefly's origin this time, okay? Now hey, let's do some giveaway things! We passed 75,000 subscribers, which was our checkpoint for a half hour, one-on-one, -on -one, or one-on-three, or whatever, video call, and the winner is... 
You! And we passed 77,000 subscribers. The checkpoint for Green Lantern, Earth 1, Volumes 1 and 2, Green Lanterns number 6, and Green Arrow number 1 and 11. The latter all from the recent Rebirth line. The winner of those is... You! Email us at contest at watchtowerdatabase.com. If you want the comics, include your name and mailing address so we can ship those to you. And if you want the Zoom call, well, just, uh, I don't know, email us anyway so we can figure that out. Think of some stuff you want to chat about. It doesn't matter what it is. I guess Batman stuff makes the most sense, but I won't tell you what to do. Our next giveaway will happen once we pass 80,000 subscribers, which is a Nightwing maquette from the new Batman adventures. There's Nightwing in your home, potentially. <laughs> All you have to do to enter as always, is feed the algorithm beast by leaving a comment on new videos. If we pass the next subscriber checkpoint and that's the latest video of ours, we'll randomly pull from the comments and select a winner. So it's also in your best interest to get more people to subscribe to the Watchtower database. What is in your best interest? is to do as we say. Thank you as always to all of our Patreon supporters whose names you see scrolling by my lovely head here. You all keep this channel alive sincerely and motivate us to keep making videos about these new DCAU comics even if they're not getting the views that we think they should be. Like, come on, I know there's more than 7,000 people reading this comic. Do you know someone that's reading this comic that's not watching our videos? You have to show them these videos. That's part of the deal, man. You don't just get to subscribe and then just uh, sit back and and enjoy the entertainment or whatever. Get us more subscribers. You have one job. Head on over to patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower to check out all the cool stuff we got going on there all the time. That's your other job. You have two jobs. Thanks for watching. Come back next week. There's a video every week. I don't remember what the next one is, but there'll be something. There's gonna be more videos about this comic. There's gonna be more videos about Justice League Infinity. We do videos all the time. Just watch them with your eyeballs. Please go watch every video on the channel. What Whatever your plans were for the day, they're canceled. I spend way too much time on these for you not to watch them. God damn it. Please. All right, bye.